good morning welcome come on in come to the table come to the table to the bite of bread i'm andy lee this is a time when we get together we study scripture and share with one another in fellowship of uh, today we're going to be studying of what jesus did what grace is our bite of bread this um this week is all about grace so good morning good to see you hey leah good morning or afternoon or whatever it is it's 8 20 here but i know it's 11 20 on the east coast kelly bernard good morning good to see y'all i'm sitting here in visalia california this is my sister-in-law's house it is hot it is hot i love you guys though i'll sit here in the sun for you as we talk about Jesus and grace and what he does. Hey Elaine, good morning. Good to see you today. Love y'all. Miss y'all. Thanks for joining me. Hey, let's pray us up. Hey Deb Warren, good morning. Good to see you. It is, it's beautiful here. It is. Let me hold your hand and pray you up. Father, we praise you. We love you. We worship you. Thank you, Lord, for the ability to pray together, to share with one another, to read your word, to study together, even when we are miles and miles apart, time zones apart. God, you, you are just amazing. We pray for our hearts and our minds to be open today, to understand grace a little bit more, to understand what you've done, who you are, what Jesus has done for us, and how that affects our life and then affects those around us. God, help us make a difference in this place. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and we pray for your grace for this, for this fellowship time in this study. It's in Jesus' name we pray, and all God's people said, Amen. Hey, Hannah, good morning. Good to see you. Um, I've already had my coffee, So, and then the coffee... Um, make or broke so I don't have any more coffee I hope you have your coffee or maybe you're already on tea or a soda or water by now but anyway hope you're all set hope you have your Bible and you have your journal and you're ready to take some notes because this is just an amazing piece of scripture that we're studying today it's in John 1 15 through 17 it's what we're going to be reading today um, I think I was in John when I was in the Grand Canyon. So we just get to continue on with this scripture, with chapter 1 of John. In John 15, John 1, verse 15 says, John testifies concerning him, concerning Jesus. And that testimony is very important in the Jewish law and the Jewish customs you had to have testimony. You had to have people testify, at least two or three witnesses of the account of the person to qualify the authority, to qualify with who they were and what they were saying. So he's saying, John the Baptist, John testifies, of all people, John the Baptist testifies concerning Jesus. He cries out saying, this was he whom I said, um, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. Now, I, I love, you know, to read in different translations. I think it's so important that when you study, when you read and you start digging deep, and I really believe we need to dig deep into the Word of God to really live fully out of that. And so when you start digging deep, I want to encourage you, to look at different translations, and it's so easy to do now with all of the, you know, the smartphones and the apps that we have and the com uh, everything we have on our computers. Hey, Ellen, good morning. I miss you guys. So, so one of the apps I use is the U Version Bible app. Many of you have that, I know, on your phone. But all you have to do on that U Version app is is um, look at the different. Bibles that are on there, and one of the ones that I look at, and I have to tell you, it sometimes is hard to read, but it also helps me understand more, is the um, Orthodox Jewish Bible. It is a complete Bible, Old Testament and New Testament, uh, but it, it reads in such a way sometimes that it really brings out an interesting translation. 
Um, and, and they often go from the Greek to, to Hebrew to understand the wording better. And so in the Orthodox Jewish Bible, the translation reads, um, the translation reads that he says, John says, he is before me in priority because before I came, he was. So that was the translation. I just, um, the NIV wrote, um, reads, this was he of when I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. So I just love that the, the um, Orthodox reading there, he is he was before me in priority because before I came, he was. And don't you hear that I am? Don't you hear that he was? He was from the beginning of time. We studied Wednesday that he was Logos, that Jesus was Logos, the Word. He was the creator of all things. When they said Logos, that, that meant the governing power behind all things. So John testified. He said, he's the one who has come before me. He was before me. He was before I was born. He was. He was. He was. <laughs> he lived. He, and so that is so powerful as John says that and he testifies of that, of Jesus. So John testifies concerning him. He and um, this was whom he I said, he who comes after me has surpassed me because he was before me. From the fullness, I love this, from the fullness of his grace, we have all received one blessing after another. We have all received one blessing after another. Verse 17, for the law was given through Moses. Grace and truth came through Jesus. Okay, let's do some digging here. We've looked at another translation with the Orthodox Jewish Bible. Um, but the word fullness, the Greek word of fullness, we talked about this some on Wednesday, is play, um, play Roma. Play Roma. Everybody want to say that with me? Play Roma. And it meant the fullness. It was the filling up of something. It was what fills, what is filled, but it also meant completion, the completion of something. So out of the complete fullness of Jesus, of all that he is, of all that that God is, we are receiving this grace from his fullness out of everything he is and has. We are receiving this grace. So grace, let's talk about grace. So grace is the, is the Greek word charis. Charis we've learned is benefit and favor and gift. Um, it's joy, it causes joy in the, the person who receives it. Pleasure and thanksgiving. It's, and it's the divine influence on the heart. I just love that, Carice, that divine influence on the heart. Has your heart changed since you have come to know Jesus, or do you want a heart change? And, and my heart has changed, but my heart still has a ways to go. And I was, I was just thinking about this yesterday. I, I you know, I still have, there, there's still thoughts that I have in me that are, um, prideful or, you know, just, just not what I want to have in me. And I was thinking the other day, we look so forward to having new bodies and perfect, you know, bodies and not this decaying thing on us that's turning gray and wrinkled or if we're sick being healed and our, our bodies being healed in heaven. But you know what? I got more excited yesterday about the fact that my spirit is going to be completely whole and healed and good and purified when I'm in heaven and I'm not going to be dealing anymore with this icky indie stuff in me that I fight a little bit every day. Barb, good to see you. Good morning. Dad, yes, me too, she says. We focus on our bodies being healed and that's going to happen in heaven. But, oh my gosh, I'm so ready. I'm so ready for this heart to be completely pure and good and kind and having no selfishness or, you know, any of that stuff um, in me um, when I get to heaven. So, 
the divine influence of the heart. I'm thankful for grace every day. And I, I know I've got grace. We have grace on us. Jesus brought that grace. But I pray for more and more of that grace on me every day to keep on changing my heart. Keep on influencing divine influence on my heart. Because we're going to learn that that word grace is not just in the Greek. It's charis. But in Hebrew, when I looked at the Orthodox Jewish Bible, they have translated that as kesed, or it is kesed. They use the word kesed. So it says, in according to that translation, that we have been given this kesed, not just grace, but kesed. So the word, if you keep on reading, I'm going to come back to kesed, but he says in verse 10, from the fullness of his grace, from the fullness of this caress, from the fullness of this kesed, we have received one blessing after another. That's what the NIV reads. But that word blessing is caress. It is a grace. So it is kesed. So from his fullness of this grace he has, this kesed of him, from all that he is, we receive this kesed. Not just this grace, because... You know, we take that word, and, but kesed, kesed is that word we had no English word perfect counterpart for. Kesed is grace and love and mercy all combined. Kesed has to do with acts of loving kindness. It has to do with um, a covenant and with a relationship. Uh-oh, I'm losing my microphone here. I don't even know if I need it. It's so quiet in this area. But just in case I have it, my ears don't like these ever. Anyway, so um, so Cassid. So from his Cassid, we are receiving this Cassid, this blessing, this Cassid, one after another, again and again, my friends. God, God's Cassid is everlasting. God's Cassid is not based on our ability to pay him back. It's a gift. That's what grace is, and that's what his chesed is. So we receive that blessing. We receive that grace. We receive chesed one after another after another. For the law, verse 17, was given through Moses, but grace and truth came through Jesus. So let's talk about that a minute. We, we think of the, the law being a bad thing, but the law was a good thing. This was... This was what God gave only to his people, to the Jewish people, so that they could be in relationship with him. They could come before him in his presence, or the priests could come. They could have the temple. That's The law was part of, you know, he said, you do this and I, you will have my favor. That was, that was a good thing, and that was... That was grace, and that was chesed. That was his kindness, and Moses brought that. But then Jesus brought this full, complete, um, complete measure of his grace and his kindness because now we don't even go through the law anymore, do we? We go straight through Jesus, through our faith in Jesus. We can go straight to the throne of God. So in verse 17, for the law was given through Moses, grace and truth came through Jesus. We had learned on Wednesday that grace and truth, those, that term, um, was a Hebrew formula expressing a divine nature. Di a divine nature. Grace and truth coming together was the expression of a divine nature in Jesus. That was grace. You want to know grace? You just watch Jesus. And you read about him. You read how he, how he spoke to people, what he said to people, how he healed people, how he died on a cross for us. Let, turn with me to Philippians 2, 1 through 11. This is the embodiment of grace um, with hands and feet. Um, and in Philippians 2, I just want to start reading. If you have any encouragement from being united with Christ, if any comfort from his love, if any fellowship with the Spirit, if any tenderness and compassion, then make my joy complete by being like-minded, having the same love, being one in spirit and purpose. Do nothing out of selfish ambition or vain conceit, 
but in humility, consider others better than yourselves. So, so I'm reading this because it's like, okay, what do we do with this knowledge? What do we do with this knowledge of, of Jesus bringing grace and truth and, and all he did? How does that affect us? Well, my friends, that grace is not just for us to receive and have on our own and hoard it. But grace is to be given, it's to be passed on, it's to be shared with those around us. Because that's what Kesed is. It's this receiving and giving and helping and merciful and loving acts of kindness. That is what that grace and that Kesed is. Yes, and so it says, do nothing out of selfish ambition, verse 3 in Philippians 2. Do nothing out of a selfish ambition or vain conceit, but in humility consider others better than yourselves. Each of you should look not only to your own interests, but also to the interest of others. Your attitude should be the same of Christ Jesus. Hello, I need your help, Lord, to do that. I need you to change my heart in order for that to happen. Who being, listen to this, in the very nature of God, we, we saw on Wednesday that he was Logos. He was the, the creator behind all things. That Christ being the very nature of God, I'm reading in Philippians 2, verse 6, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant, um, being made in human likeness, and being found in appearance as a man. He humbled himself and became obedient to death, even death on a cross. Therefore God exalted him to the highest place and gave him the name that at the name of Jesus, every knee should bow. Every knee should bow. I don't know if I'm dark here, if, the, if it's shadow, I'm sorry. But in every tongue confess that Jesus Christ is Lord, to the glory of God the Father. Amen and amen. What do we do with this? What do we do with this grace of Jesus? Well, we accept it. It's a gift. It's something we can't earn. We study him. We look at how he lived and what he did. He lived as a servant. He served others. He didn't consider equality with God something to be grasped. He didn't come to be served, but he came to serve that we would have a heart to serve those around us. He became obedient. He became obedient even death on a cross. Very few of us will be asked, if any of us, will have to become obedient to death on a cross. But we do need to be obedient to death of, of this selfish pride and, and the yuck that's inside of us to be open to his life and his grace that we would extend it to those around us. And my friends, I truly believe when we start living that way, when we have that in us and we're giving that to others around us, we know the full life that Jesus talked about, that abundant life, that way of living. Because for me, living for myself is empty, but living for others gives, it gives joy. It gives that, that caress and that kindness and acts of kindness. It makes me happy when I pass that on to others around me. So as we close today and we go back, actually I'm not going to go back. I'm going to read in Philippians 2. Therefore my dear friends, this is how I'm going to close today. As you have always obeyed, not only in my presence as Paul said but now much more in my absence continue to work out your salvation. Work it out. Keep on living it out. Not so much working it out because we can't work for it but live it out. Live it out day after day. Live it out. Live out your salvation with fear and trembling, for it is God who works in you. It is God who works in you and works in me to, for it is God who works in you and in me to will and to act according to his good purposes. Do everything without complaining or arguing so that you may be blameless and pure children of God without fault and a crooked and depraved generation in which you shine like the stars in the universe as you hold out the word of life in order that I may boast on the day that I did not run or labor in vain. Who has spoken to you about Christ? Who has poured into you? 
where you keep on serving and you keep on believing and you keep on um, living out in your faith that blesses that person who taught you about Jesus and it blesses the people that you are speaking to and you are serving and you are sharing Christ with. And that, my friends, I believe that is living a life of grace. Hold my hand. Let me pray you up. Thank you, Lord, so much for this word. Thank you, Lord, for your faithfulness, your kindness, your chesed, loving acts of kindness and mercy that we don't deserve but gives us relationship with you, Jesus. Thank you for that you are our model. You are um, the one who did it perfectly, Lord. We need your grace as we live this life out. Help us to give grace to others all around us and shine like the stars in the universe. Thank you for those watching. Lord, bless them. Bless them from the top of their head to the bottom of their feet. I do pray for touch of physical healing where they need it. I pray for emotional, mental, and spiritual healing, Father God. I pray for the blood of Jesus over them. Lord, you know everything that's going on in their lives. Let them feel your presence and know you're with them and see your chesed, your kindness. It's in Jesus' name we pray. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Thanks for joining me. I am burning up. I'm going to go inside to the air conditioning. I love y'all. Um, go to wordsbyandylee.com on Sunday night, Monday morning. There will be a new body bread up. I have no idea what it's going to be. God's going to have to show me today. But wordsbyandylee.com, there will be a, a printable with a reading plan and questions and prompts to help you with your time with the Lord next week. Um, I don't know what next week is going to be looking like because I'll be traveling. But if I can come to you, I will post it on Facebook and let you know when I'm coming. Y'all have a great day, a great weekend. Get some rest, love on your families, and spend time with Jesus. Mwah. Bye.